Hello everyone, welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And I've got a couple of things to show you today. The, uh, the first big headline one being a, a, a fantastic new weapon against the biters. And then there's a load of sort of little tinkering bits around the edges where we're trying to get the resources in and flowing properly. So, let's get started. As I was saying, the first thing I want to talk about is that we've now got the plague rockets up and being produced. So Mark has put together this um, this chemical plant, sorry, this biochem facility up here that is making the uh, the glorious, glorious plague rockets. And those are made out of a, a collection of various different biological things. We need to pump in a load of the extended biological catalogs, which is quite expensive. And it takes ten of those as well, so these are quite expensive, but I suppose you only actually need one per planet. Uh, then you need the biomasses, biosource chemicals, and, and out of that you get a plague rocket and a load of goop out. And so we've, um, yeah, we, we got a little bit carried away. We seem to have made about 28 of them which is um, excessive but never mind we, we, we've got the supply available now for it for, for use in the future and so having produced one of these rockets well we had to we had to go off and test it because of course we did uh, so Mike took one with him uh, along with a, a small handheld rocket launcher which seems kind of ridiculous for a, uh, a bioweapon that can wipe out every single biter on an entire planet and went off to his planet of Kothar this is where the iridium comes from and we touched on this one in the last video a little bit and on this planet he'd started in the corner um, as, as much as you can have a corner on a on, on the edge of a circle um, and, and so that meant he was quite a long way from the origin of the planet and therefore the biters were fairly fairly vicious fairly, there's quite a lot of them which is why he had a certain amount of trouble with them earlier on in the run but this made it a good one to uh, to try out the weapon on and so as you can see here he ran he uh, ran out he fired it out of the rocket launcher and there was a rather disappointing little puff of smoke when it uh, when it when it landed and it didn't seem to have done very much However, we then sort of looked around a little bit, and we could see that in a rapidly expanding circle around where he he dropped the uh, the missile, the biters were dying off very very quickly. And so it first went out and it killed off all of the all of the spawners, all of the worms, and then after that it then started to work work its way around through dealing killing off um, the biters. Now the biters were being killed quite slowly by it, so most of them I suspect actually ended up dying because they threw themselves against the laser turrets around the edges of the uh, around the edges of the factory. But it was definitely killing them off, so it seems seems to have worked very nicely. And now if we have a look at uh, Kothar in the in the Universe Explorer, we can see that it's now described as a plague world, and that means that now if you go onto this planet, you need, as it says, you require life support. So you need a spacesuit, and you'll churn through life support canisters as if you were in space. And that doesn't really seem like a particularly large penalty. We, we're quite happy to take that uh, for, in order to get have got rid of all the biters. There is another potential downside of using the plague rocket, however. If you use it on a Vita Melange planet, then it will actually not only will it kill the biters, it will also also kill the vitamilange and turn it all into coal and so it can't really be used on those planets uh, we'll, we'll have to we and with so big grid we have we have made safe using the glaive weapons instead but as you've seen with Talos in the past using the glaive weapons can be a little bit dangerous so we have to be careful with those and so that has rendered Kothar completely safe we've confirmed a hostile extinction we can now do things like trimming the surface we could potentially remove all of these all these walls and laser turrets if we wanted to and we can probably get and we can get rid of all of the uh, pollution scrubbing as well because it's no longer necessary I think Mike has left it running because otherwise what are we going to do with all the bits and pieces that are in here maybe shove them on a rock on, on a spaceship and take them away again but for now he can just leave the system running but he doesn't need to worry about making any more pollution filters for for use in the future Speaking of Mike, he has made some minor tweaks out here on Oliran, and this is the uh, this is the iron planet. So we were, where we're producing the the iron core fragments, and then getting enormous quantities of iron ore out, which goes into the system here. He started to point all of these loaders across to the right. So in theory, we're now going to empty off these um, these warehouses as we get through the other resources at the other end, and so eventually we'll be able to take out these three and all the all the loaders working with them, which will hopefully save us a little bit on the UPS front. These are all, as you've seen before, then being taken up to orbit, where they'll be loaded onto a spaceship, which will take them to Norvis orbit, where they can all be unloaded here. So as you see, we've got a huge quantity of um, of iron ore available. We've got, tw I mean, there's 25,000 in that warehouse, 25,000 in that warehouse, and then another... Pfft, 45, 50,000 in the in these warehouses. So we have a huge amount of, um, of of the iron ore stockpiled now. And there is a train that goes from here over to the alternative space elevator, which allows it to be brought down to the ground where it's put into this station by the by this by the space train, and then brought over to here where it can be picked up and taken all the way from one corner of the uh, the, the uh, factory all the way down here, all the way up to this corner of the factory up here where it gets unloaded into the system up here and we've actually started using it so the um, the iron ore has started being unloaded from the uh, uh, fr from this warehouse as you can see and passed through into here and we're actually we're actually using it now and part of the reason we've ended up using it is because we had some issues with the trains and so Tristan's been doing quite a lot of train fixing in the in the last stream and the problem was because our iron mines were starting to run a bit low a lot of the trains were then stopping here because there wasn't a good iron mine to go to that had a full a full supply of iron available so they weren't they weren't leaving 
They were just getting stuck at this point. So Tristan has taken a couple of them and parked them elsewhere to get them out of the way so that they'll be used. At the moment, these ones I imagine are all, yes, these are all priority trains that are bringing the ore over from the core processing area or from the uranium processing area because those are the areas where it's produced as a byproduct along with other stuff and therefore we want to get rid of it as quickly as possible to make sure that um, we don't we don't get cause a backlog of, with the other resources. Now, this train doesn't seem to be going back and forth quite as much as I would like. It seems, okay, it's waiting, waiting here. Okay, it's filling up again and then it will head back over. It looks like, given the rate we're getting through iron ore at at the moment, maybe we're going to need a second train doing this this route, and we can get rid of this, so we can get rid of this bit of track in the middle here, and allow the and allow the trains to queue up along here. So we can have a couple of them waiting. Um, at the moment, it does seem like we don't have enough. Um, that that said, there's about. 12, 14,000 um, iron ore in, in the warehouses along here, so it's not completely, it's not running out too badly, but we do need to make sure that it keeps getting brought over from the, um, uh, from from here where there's a train getting filled up, so the system is, is basically working, and also brought over from the supply that's being brought down from space. A little bit of additional work may be, may be required to make sure that the uh, mine trains don't get stuck here. To an extent, it's quite tempting to just say, let's stop digging it up out of the mines because we don't need it. Let's only let's only bring it down from from, from the core mining where we want to get rid of it and from Oliran where there's an enormous, enormous supply of it. And let's just not worry about the mines. Uh, maybe that'll be the way we'll go. We shall see. Speaking of Tristan and poking at trains, we've had some problems in the last stream with uh, train jams going on in this area in the middle over here. The problem is that this is sort of one, this area of the station, particularly this T-junction here and the and the bit of line coming off over this way, has an enormous amount of the train traffic that goes through the base going through this one specific area. I mean, even at the moment where things aren't be, aren't running that busily, you can still see there's quite a lot of trains run, running around ar around here. So you can see why we're starting, why this is where, where the problems start to happen. Tristan's fixed it to an extent by you going in here and putting in a lot of chain signals to make sure that trains don't get stuck part way round these loops because I think the problem we, we saw in the last stream was due to a train being sort of halfway round here and trying to go somewhere and another train round here trying to go somewhere and then trains in the middle on the straights blocking it all uh, so that was definitely causing a jam and uh, un until we went in and gave it a good poke but and hopefully this is going to have helped quite a lot with it. But in the long run, it'd be nice to have some additional routes to get around this area. So perhaps having a rail that comes across up here, for example, or one that pushes through the bus down here, but there's an awful lot of stuff in the way, so that'd be rather difficult. Yeah, this, this whole area around here has got very, very crowded because it's the beginning of the bus. There's an enormous number of stations around here. There's a lot of throughput. There's a lot of trains going from this area over to this area and vice versa. It's a very busy area right in the middle of the factory and that's causing a lot of trouble. I was looking at it a little bit earlier and it occurred to me that we could perhaps have the trains come through the middle here to help a little bit. So if we put in a piece of rail like that to allow trains to come, that are coming along the bottom of here to come down here and into this area. And then from somewhere along here we allowed them to go from here onto this rail like that, then this would allow them to come out here and then go down or up as, as appropriate. And that would relieve quite a lot of the pressure on this particular area. It might push it all over to here and we might still have problems in this area, but it would at least split off the trains that are trying to go up from the trains that are trying to go left, but need to go up to get to the left turn. Um, and then if we could find some similar way of getting them in to come out the other way, perhaps putting in a piece of rail from here Onto, onto here, something like that, then having all of these different routes in here would make potentially could help get a lot of the could help get the trains running a lot more freely and just generally a lot better. And that's a tiny, tiny amount of work needed to be done. There's no need to no need to move anything around. Just adding in a few little pieces of of, of rail. So I shall show this when when all the others see this uh, if, this video. We'll see what they think and whether they think that's a good idea. And now, on the general subject of things that Tristan has been fixing, well, we have um, an enormous number of, um, of of junk data cards filling up the, uh, the 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 chest over here. And at the moment, there's there's not a huge number coming in right now. They tend to come in sort of fits and bursts, and sometimes we'll have an enormous number of them. Sometimes we'll, sometimes it'll be okay. And so those were coming through here, and, and we only had about three or four of these computers trying to reformat them, and that wasn't remotely enough. So Tristan has expanded the number of the uh, tier two supercomputers. Are they tier twos? Yes, tier two supercomputers we've got all the way along here. Shoved speed modules in all of them and it changed the and I believe also changed the coolant that's being used and so we're now running much much more quickly sometimes this belt does jam up a little bit along here but I think that's I think it's basically okay because then they if it does then they're still being processed by the machines up at the other end
The problem that this can create, and it's not happening right now, but I did see it happening earlier, um, is, the, is then on the sheer quantity of the, uh, the broken data cards coming through here, and there weren't enough pulverizers to deal with all of those. And the fix for that is just to come in and put some speed modules in them all like that. Right now it doesn't seem to be required, but I have definitely seen problems around here with it all jamming up, and so I would like to sort of get in a little bit ahead of the, of the problem if I can. As part of the biological stuff, the vitamelange production, Mark has been generating quite a lot of methane ice, and so he's been putting that in the spaceship to get rid of it, and that means it ends up finding its way down in the disposal train to come in here and be shoved into this warehouse. And, okay, we had a way of getting rid of it, it was getting put into this purple chest, but that meant it was just taken away to put in the warehouses of shame, and, and nobody, and, we'd, and there's just, it was just building up in the warehouses of shame, and we don't want that. And so, Tristan has added in an, an additional output over here, much the same way that the sulphur one was added in last week, to act to take out the methane ice and put it into a, tra a station over here. Now the problem with this is I don't think we're actually using methane ice anywhere in the factory, so at the moment we are just stockpiling it in this warehouse, but I think it's probably better to be stockpiling it in this warehouse where it can be easily be taken away by a train, than to be collecting it in the, uh, in the uh, warehouses of shame. So this is an improvement, but it's still only a sort of a gradual one and we may run into a problem here sometime in the future. That said, this system is less than 20% full, so it's going to be a good while until that becomes a problem. Speaking of the warehouses of shame, I've put, I also added in some additional uh, requester chests on, in, the, uh, in the module city area on Norvis to pull out all the lower tier modules from the, um, from, from the warehouses of shame. So because in, with a lot of the, um, the free power and some of the um, capsule systems we've been making, there have been quite a lot of the lower tier modules used in those. So as we've been ripping up the free power systems, we've been generating a lot of those modules and they've just all been ending up in the disposal systems, dumped into the chests of shame and then basically forgotten about. In order to sort of improve that a little bit, we're now I've, I've now put in these these chests, which are all requesting um, large numbers of well, relatively small numbers of the of the speed modules. So those can then be brought over from the chests of shame uh, and then put out into the, onto the belt here, where they will then flow up to be made into tier two modules. And I've got one also asking for the tier two modules, and then these can flow up to be made into the tier three modules, the ones that we're then taking away to orbit or to wherever or to be used around the factory, because tier three is our is our current baseline. That's what we normally use. And so having this system and pulling them through out of the warehouses of shame is fantastic because it means they're, they're saving on all the resources required to make these modules and it's also meaning we're pulling them out of the warehouses and, and, and freeing up space and just saving on all the resources we would otherwise be using. So I've got the same thing in for the uh, the green efficiency modules as well and over here for the, for, the, um, pro for the productivity modules. So all of those will eventually pull any remaining modules out of the chest. So down here we've got, yeah, still got 100 in there. They'll all be pulled out and all used up. On a very similar note, up in Norvis Orbit, I've set this up as a green warehouse now. So it, on the in the module production area up here, we're pull, so we're pulling out all of the tier three modules that are in the in the system up in orbit. Originally, we were bringing them up in the space bus train, and they were being unloaded in, into the warehouses over here. So this has allowed me to pull them all out of there and shove them into a warehouse over here, where they can. Um, so so when they're needed, when we build something, they can be pulled out of here because it's a green warehouse. But also, they can be passed up here to be upgraded into the higher tier modules. Also, I've put in a, a, a requester chest over here that is asking for any uh, tier two modules. Those are being pulled out and shoved into the into the trains that take the junk down back down onto Norvis, where they will admittedly then go get dumped into a purple chest. But from that purple chest, they can then be put into module city and once again upgraded because there shouldn't be any tier two modules up here in space. I can't do that with tier one modules, and in fact I don't want to, because those are required here on this belt and are being brought over to be turned into some of the, the, the mid-tier science packs, so the, the productivity and the utility sciences. And so we need to have those available over here, and so I'm not, I'm not requesting those, but any, any of them that are, are found around the, around the factory will be dumped into the yellow chest at the top, and then will rattle down and end up in the, in, in the, in the warehouse here and be passed out as they should be. So all of this... Basically what I'm saying here is all of the lower tier modules should now be getting dealt with in sensible ways, taken away to be processed into higher tier modules or, um, and bumped up, or at least bumped up to tier 3 if not further. While we're thinking about the module area, I have also added in um, the Holmium intermediates to be brought over to, uh, and, and put into the warehouse system down here. So previously, I was having them come in on the on the general Holmium intermediates and quantum processor train here, but that one just wasn't working very well for me. I think it's too busy trying to do other things as well. So we've cut that one off. It's no longer going to be bringing the uh, bringing in the Holmium intermediates to here. They're all going to be brought up in the train from the from, from the ground, which will come along to here, dro drop them off into into here, and then we've got these belts bringing them up. And yes, okay, there's some belts up here to mix them in as, as appropriate. I don't need these ones anymore because the um, because all, all of the uh, all, all the holmium cables have gone so I could remove all of that and do 
that. Um, I can't do, I can't quite do that with the Holmium Solenoids yet because there's still a few on this belt here. The problem is these ones on the belt won't actually get used because they're on the bottom side. So as they come into this junction here, this junction will always take from the the, the right hand, the, the first side first, uh, and there should always be some on there because they're being supplied from down here. So this means that unless I use a belt side balancer along here, we're never actually going to use up these ones that are on the belt, which is a shame. Um, and I might need to go in and sort of tweak that so that they do actually get used up. But in the but for now, it doesn't really matter. The system will work. In fact, I could do it by just rotating that belt there. And then these ones will flow through, will have a priority. But when they all get used up, we'll still pull them in off this belt because it's going to be able to it's going to be able to side load into the uh, into, into the underground belt there, and they'll be passed out this way. So yeah, that's quite a nice neat fix in there. And now with, with the way the systems are set up, we've got all of the Iridium intermediates coming in here, and that means we've got plenty of all of the modules. So we've got 50 of those, 50, 50 of the tier 5s, 50 of the tier 4s. Uh, similarly with the efficiency modules, we've got 50 tier 4, 5 and 6. Unfortunately with the uh, productivity modules, we've got a shortage of the Vitamelange extract coming in here, and so that's stopping the tier 4s being produced, which is stopping all of the later ones being produced. But now that um, Mark has finished fixing the Immersite planet, now he can probably concentrate on fixing the Vitamelange planet and getting that up and working properly as well. It's a, you know, one thing at a time. You can only, you can, you can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> and of course I've set this, the trains over here to depart when, when it runs out of any one thing. And I think I showed you this last week, so I think I set this up over here. But this means that when we run out of any one of these things, that minus one will turn into an up arrow and we'll call a train immediately. Down on Norvis, I uh, did some upgrades here that I was talking about last week. So we've now got uh, speed modules in all of these uh, pulverizers, or recycling facilities rather, and more importantly, a pipe going across here to take the heavy oil away from these machines and put it into this underground pipe that goes through here to the station where it's taken away. Um, this was struggling a lot in the last in the last set of videos, so I think the upgrade here is very very useful. However, it's notable now that we still we ha now have absolutely no scrap coming through. And if we look over here, we can see that it's because um, okay, actually no, this has started working again. Um, I was going to say it's because this this area has stopped uh, producing the rough data substrates because we've got enough of them. But no, actually it seems to, it seems to have started working again, and we've now got a, a flood of the uh, the scrap coming through. So that's been going for a little while. It did look like we had a shortage of the um, yes, there we go. There's a short there is a bit of a shortage of rare metals up here, unfortunately. Um, but the trains come in. It's tried to drop this. It's dropped them off. They've all been used up, and now they've all been well. Now they've all been used up, and so we clearly need to have a slightly better supply of rare metals um, running. And I had I had a quick look over here. It turns out that yeah, we've got. The, the system is running merrily. We've got we've got a nice supply of the. Uh, no, I was going to say we've got a nice supply of the the uh, raw rare metals. We we don't seem to. Up here there is. Oh yeah, there's only 128, 129, 130 stacks of raw rare metals in here. So perhaps we're going to need to look into getting a bit more, uh, getting setting up some rare metal uh, mines, and that seems like a really weird thing to need given how much of a surplus we've always had of it. But we seem to be using it up quite a rate. The other possibility, of course, is going to be to do some upgrading of the uh, processing facility, which I ca currently can't find. Here it is, um, because at the moment it's using the basic chemical plants and the electric furnaces, and both of these could be upgraded to the uh, the advanced furnaces and advanced chemical plants, and that would allow us to put a lot more productivity modules in and use a lot fewer machines. So it, we get a lot more output from a lot fewer machines because they'd run faster and just generally better. So I think I think an upgrade there might be required. That might be another thing to put on the list. But as it is, it's running reasonably well. It is still using red belts everywhere though, which is a little bit feeble. We want to upgrade it like uh, Mark did with the glass production down here. As you can see, we've got a relatively small number of furnaces producing crazy amounts of glass and just keeping the entire system satisfied. So some upgrades are required there. And as you can see, we can get in a lot more productivity modules as well. So that means a lot more free, extra rare metals coming out for free. And that'll be rather nice. Further from home, other upgrades have been made. This is uh, Njord, the planet where all the Holmium comes from. So Tristan has boosted the amount of plastic, cryonite and vulcanite that's being brought out here to Njord in order to allow us to get a lot more Holmium out of the system. So hopefully this all will be now working really, really nicely. It looks to be going pretty well at the moment, but the real test is he's coming into the production graphs and having a look to see how that's been going. So until recently, we've been getting about, about 220 per minute. That seems um, like a quantity and more recently we've had these spikes so it's clearly been going up and down based on this might be the amount of um, hol holmanite that's been being brought in by train each one of these spikes might be a train arriving um, but all of the spikes are significantly higher than the, the the general line we had before so the overall production has gone up quite a bit um, it, it, previously it was it was what we we're saying to about 220 if we look over the last 10 minutes or the last hour you can see it's been producing about 270 so it's a step in the right direction um, 
a little bit of further look, uh, checking to see where the bottlenecks are now would be would be very useful. But there's been a general improvement here, which is which is great. On Big Rid, Mark has started bringing in large quantities of sulfur by, by on, on the spaceships. So that's all this that's flowing down here and trying to make the Vitalik epoxy. So you remember that last time when we, look, when we looked at this, we discovered that it, the, uh, the Vitalik uh, epoxy was struggling because there wasn't any sulfur. Now it's struggling because there isn't, isn't sufficient Vitalik reagent. And if we follow the belts back, we can see that over here we're not making Vitalik reagent because there's insufficiency of lithium chloride, which is failing because there's not enough hydrogen chloride which is failing because there's not enough of those, which is failing because there's not enough sand. And over here I noticed there was a shortage of glass as well, which is also a sand related problem. So it, it looks like um, Mark currently has a shortage of stone out on this planet, so well, we're gonna need, he's going to need to find some more of that somewhere. I guess there's no reason why that, that couldn't be brought over on the, uh, on the spaceship as well. We have, we have loads and loads of stone available in, on uh, Norvis, as we've found, because some of it's being turned into landfill at the moment. And if we look at the, um, the Universe Explorer here, we can see that we could, if, if we wanted to, head out to Androgun, or I think there's another stone uh, primary somewhere in, in, the, in the solar system. And so we could get a, a huge amount of stone from here in the same way that we're getting loads and loads of um, iron from Oliran. Uh, and that can be always used to make sure everything is always topped up and we've always got plenty. Or alternatively, we can just use the excess we seem to have on Norvis at the moment. Over on Snowdrop, there had also been um, some sand problems. And I think that was being taken away, being put into a machine to be taken away by a delivery cannon, which is a, a bit of a waste. Now Tristan's fixed it, so we're just pouring all of the sand down down this belt here that along with everything else is just being dumped into the into the warehouse here to be then put into this into the train to go to be taken away by spaceship so that's a nice easy way of, uh, of disposing of it all and yeah there's quite a nice supply of cryonite coming through as well which uh, probably goes some way to explaining why the cryonite supply seems to actually be okay at the moment I did my traditional run round of checking all of the planets that I'm responsible for to making sure making sure they're all working and it turned out that um, Agnair was not and after a little bit of uh, poking around I saw there's there's nothing flowing in here so I looked up here and it turned out we'd completely run out of sulfur the sulfur wasn't wasn't coming through so I followed that back along the trail and it turned out over here we'd run out of ice the ice was there was no ice in the in the box here so there was no water to make, to allow us to process the oil and all, and then to process the petroleum gas into sulfur and it turned out that that was due to this cryonite station up here having run out of cryonite, uh, which is then get fed down here, down, 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 all the way down here, uh, where it gets, where it then gets turned into ice down here uh, to be shipped off by delivery cannon over to Agnea, and that's that's where all of this comes from. So I looked, I've looked at this a bit and thought, hang on a minute, why are we doing this by delivery cannon? Especially when, if I look on Agnea again, there is already a supply of ice being brought in by the tr by the uh, spaceship by the trains to be brought over to here to make the water that we're using as part of the uh, vulcanite block process uh, that gets boiled to steam and then condensed back down again and goes round and round and round. So we have this supply of ice here already. So clearly I need to just run a belt from here over to here and sh to be it for now I could just shove it straight into this uh, into this uh, delivery cannon chest and then that would stop us having to ship it over by uh, by delivery cannon so I think that is a thing I need to do and then make sure that enough ice is being brought over that the whole system doesn't fall apart of course. Finally, I noticed the system on Talos has stopped working. We have the other, uh, because we'd run out of, it was at least two of the vulcanite, cryonite and sulfur, but I can't remember which ones off the top of my head. But we'd run out of some, some of those. Now, this isn't a serious problem, because we already have far more beryllium in Norbit than we know what to do with. We're, that The beryllium production has gone really, really well. We've got absolutely loads of it. Um, however, I thought, well, let's let's leave this, let's give the system a nudge, keep it running. So I, I, I gave the spaceship over in, in Norbit a nudge, told it to fly back out again, even though it still had a bit of um, beryllium left on it and probably some some other junk as well so that allowed it to bring out some more vulcanite cryonite sulfur and that's why the system over here is still working quite happily um, and the train will run the run run the resources up up top until it's until it's uh, until it's either full or we actually run out of one of these things and if we do run out of one of them it's not the end of the world because we've got the emergency override in here where we have this uh, if 15 minutes passes then the train will depart even if it isn't full and the reason we've done this is in case the system, basically in case this system down here stalls because it runs out of all these things, at least then the train will go round and round and keep checking to see if there's any of the uh, any of the resources it needs up in orbit. And if there is, then it can bring them back down again and the whole system will kick back into action. So rather than getting into a position where it stalls and jams and somebody has to manually trigger the train in order to get it running again, this system, with that 15 minute uh, check in there means that if we do have a problem the train will eventually go off and just 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 to make sure that things are going okay and see if it's see if there's see if any uh, extra resources have been delivered yet and this brings us on to everyone's favorite part of the video where we look at the researchers and the new toys we've discovered in the last stream and top of the list is the energy shield mark 4 and 
My first thought was say, well, these aren't particularly useful because they're not compatible with jetpacks, but they could actually be quite handy for clearing out the pyramids. So making making one of these, then going charging into a pyramid could be very, very useful because this gives you an enormous amount of protection. Uh, there's a thousand hit points on there, which is like almost a quarter of a of a large of a behemoth biter. <laughs> so yes, you get quite you get quite a lot of hit points out of it. It'll be it'll be it'll help a lot with uh, going in and, and and dealing with the dealing with the pyramids later on when we need to do that. On a similarly protective note, we've also developed med pack. Uh, tier 4. Uh, these I can't imagine us using these because they're quite expensive and fiddly to make because they require lots of weird and difficult biological things to make them. And if you do make one, it's probably going to reco recover more health than you actually have in a, in a player anyway. So I, does that mean some of it will get it get wasted or does it mean it only uses up some of the medkit? I'm actually not sure. I'm hoping it's the latter. But anyway, you, either way, you, you're still probably going to be better off just using raw fish and eating those as fast as you can to, to try and keep your health up. Or using the armour and the shields to make sure you don't take the damage in the first place. So, Med Pack 4, probably not so useful. We've developed Behemoth uh, Biter and Spitter Capsules. These are, um, and th these produce friendly biters of those types. So, again, potentially could be useful for going into a pyramid. You go in there, chuck out, chuck out half a dozen um, Behemoth Biter Capsules, run away so that the biters stop aggroing on you, and then go back in again and then start trying to kill all the biters that aren't, um, aren't friendly. Um, it might work fairly well. I, I, don't, I don't really know. It's something I think it's worth trying, um, but I think it's something that's only going to be useful inside the pyramids because everywhere else we're going to use the plague rockets. Hmm. I wonder if you could use a plague rocket in a pyramid. It'd be interesting to find out. But uh, yes, there are various there are options here that could be uh, they they could be useful. I'm not sure they're worth the effort of making them because you have to make all of the earlier tiers of biotic capsules. You require various other things. I, yeah, I don't know. It, I feel like it'd be interesting to play with them, but I'm not sure it's worth the effort that creating them is going to take. We have done more zone discovery, so we've done deep space zone discovery up to 20, and that's the one where you go out and you find other um, other stars, other um, asteroid fields around the, the local universe area, uh, where we can go off to to find the uh, Naquium. And we've also done some zone discoveries all the way up to 35, and this allows you to find planets in orbit around other suns, and in orbit around your own sun if you haven't found them all yet. And so it gives us a bit, a bit more of an idea of what's out there and allows us to uh, to decide if it's if it's going to be worth going to any of these other solar systems. I'm pretty sure it won't be. We've got a good supply of pretty much everything we need in our own solar system, with the exception of copper. And I feel that going out to another solar system in order to get copper is probably going to be a bit of a nonsense. What we'll probably do is set up a system on one, one of the other one of the planets that has a decent amount of it and, and, and just gather it from there. We've also been working on stronger explosives. We've did we've done seven and eight and nine finished while I was recording the video, so that doesn't really count. Uh, this makes everything that goes bang go bang a bit more loudly, uh, which again now we have the plague rocket. It's probably a little bit unnecessary, and I don't think we really used any of these. Uh, oh no, actually, I no, take it back. We did. We probably did use the atomic bombs a bit, and the uh, but generally we haven't been using the explosive weapons for all that much for quite a while. But it's something we can do. That, something we can research that uses material science three and. For the sort of sake of completeness, we do want to get through all of the non-infinite researches at some point anyway, so picking them off at the moment when there's not a lot else to do seems to make a certain amount of sense. I talked about how we got the matter science up and working in the in the uh, in the last in the last episode, but I don't think I really talked about what we get from it. And most of these things are just straight up upgrades on top of things for things we've already got, like the even stronger explosives and flammables, bigger spaceships, uh, better lasers, and so on. But there are a few a few things in here that are worth a little bit of a mention. So the nanomaterials and the naquia processing. These don't actually get us anything inherently on, in and of themselves, but they are important steps on, on, the, on the way through to getting for late, later toys like the big heat exchangers and, and, uh, t and, t and generators and better, better ways of making um, space elevator cable and so on. Uh, that said, the Naquium processing does get us the Naquium heat pipes, which could potentially be useful. We can also produce, and uh, we can now also research matter fusion, which will allow us to turn particle stream into ores. Um, I don't see that being particularly useful, because if, if we look at the recipes for these, if, for example, we wanted to make some of that copper that I was talking about, it would cost us a certain amount of matter synthesis data, which is kind of pricey to make. It costs us particle stream, pricey to make, and it would spit out us a bit of copper ore. These numbers don't feel useful to me. I think this is probably not going to be something we're going to use, but it is a precursor to lots of other uh, shiny purple things further down the track chain. So we'll be researching it on the way through anyway. And so that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching, as ever. Um, we shall be back on Thursday carrying on with this uh, game and, and just doing all, more of all of the things we've been talking about here, trying to fix some of the problems we found and just advance the state of the science. I'd quite like to go on and out and do the advanced tech cards at some point. I think that might be the next thing to do for, for me. 
Uh, I should be back on Tuesday as well when I should be playing some XCOM. And we've killed off two of the Chosen now, so that's going quite well. And I've started to do more of the plot missions because I feel like the uh, we've got to a position where everything is everything is fairly stable. I've got good weapons, good armour, good soldiers. So now it's time to start advancing the plot and just seeing what the game will throw at me. These catch-up videos will, of course, be back on on Saturday and Monday of next week, so we'll uh, you'll see what's been we've been getting up to in the most recent stream. And there's a video about uh, graphing and drawing graphs in Factorio in certain very weird ways uh, that came out uh, just before the weekend for supporters, and will be coming out next week for non-supporters. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. So as ever, there's always lots of stuff going on on the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of it, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.